legacy. There's power in your name. Power in your name. McDonald's is a last name. Abercrombie and Fitch, last names. Armani is a last name. Baskin Robbins is a last name. Chrysler is a last name. Fisher Price, Gucci, Hennessy, Harley Davidson, Hilton, Honda, Coles, Kraft Foods, Lowe's Movie Theater, Marriott is a last name. Maybach is a last name. Nordstrom is a last name. Pillsbury is a last name. Porsche is a last name. Procter and Gamble, two last names. Rolls Royce, Charles Rolls, Henry Royce, last names. Turner Broadcast System, Ted Turner, last name. Versace, last name. Wells Fargo, Henry Wells, William Fargo, last name. Walgreens, last name. Wrigley's, last name. Welch's Grape Juice, last name. Here you are, you think you're buying a product. You are not buying a product, you're buying a name. You think you're wearing a product. Hey, look at this product. No, you're saying, look at this family. And what you don't know is while you're making every family rich, you're making yourself broke. So you done went to one family called Wells Fargo and got $200,000 so you can go to another family called Rolls Royce so you can give them money to get yourself a car so you can go back to the hood and see the Joneses and say, look at what I, what I got. Meanwhile, Wells Fargo, their family sitting up being rich and Harley Davidson's and Rolls Royce are being rich and the Joneses are sitting there holding up people's stuff saying, look at what we did and we broke. What if I told you that your blessing is attached to your name? That part of the reason why you're not wealthy yet is because you keep trying to make Yolanda wealthy. You keep trying to make Tasha wealthy. What if you made Johnson's wealthy? What if you started thinking about your kids? What if you started thinking about your legacy? What if God started dropping Canaan and opening up windows of heaven? Because now you're not just thinking about you, you're thinking kingdom. There are some people who are attached to you who say, Mama, can you do something with this name? There, there, there are some people who are saying, Dad, can you do something with this name? Maybe God gave you the name to change and reverse some of the stuff that the name meant one day. I wish there was somebody in this room that said my name might mean one thing right now, but I promise after today, this name is getting ready to change. I promise after today, everybody's going to want my last name. I'm here to let you know you are a curse breaker. You're thinking kingdom. You are not just getting married, you're breaking a curse. You are not just graduating from college, you're breaking a curse. You are not just getting out of high school, you're breaking a curse. You are not just saved, you're breaking a curse. And everybody around you is about to be blessed because of what God's getting ready to do in your life. I don't know what my name meant before I got here, but I know it's gonna be before I leave. You got a legacy. Power in your name. A legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. Your legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. I, I don't care about legacy, I'm single. I don't care about legacy, I don't have no kids. I don't care about legacy, my family never cared about me. I don't care about them. I, I, my life is my own. I don't, why do I need to even think about legacy? Well, here's the thing I have to say to you. The thing you need to know is this. You are leaving a legacy whether you want to or not. Everybody in this room is gonna leave a legacy. The question is, are you gonna be intentional about the legacy you're leaving? Are you actually going to be intentional or are you just going to let anything be passed down, anything be given to others on your behalf? Don't let it be so. It's like this weekend, this past weekend, I went out to go preach. And when I went to go preach, I went into a city and I rented a car. And I rented a car. When I went to the uh, rental car, they said, go down, go downstairs in the garage, you can grab any car. When I went down there, there were only two cars. There was one car that looked like it wouldn't make it past Monday. And then there was another car. So I went to this car, but when I got into the car, the car smelled like cigarette smoke. And, and so I, I took off with the car, cause you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, let me get out of here. And so I'm driving the car for a couple of days. When I bring the car back, drop off the keys. They say, hey, you have any problems with the car? I said, no problem with the car. They said, all right, cool. I leave and uh, they said, they, I, I looked on my email and they billed me $350. How are you gonna charge me 
I never smoked a day in my life. They said, sorry, sir, you brought the car back to smell like cigarettes. I said, no, I didn't bring the car back to smell like cigarettes. Y'all brought me a car that smelled like cigarettes. They said, no, all we know is that you brought us a car with cigarettes, so you have to pay the price. Can I tell you something? That is a picture of many of our lives. Some of us lived a life that stunk so bad. And many of you are paying a price for a life that you didn't live, but somebody lived before you and they handed you down a name or a life that stunk so bad that now you got to pay forever for it. And I'm here to let you know, stop giving people this dirty, nasty, stinky life. Why don't you build a legacy so when somebody gets into the car of your life, they want to say thank you instead of, I can't believe what you did to me. Um, everybody here has struggled with an addiction that's not yours. It was an addiction that your family didn't deal with. It was an addiction that your father just overlooked. And so it got passed down to you. And now you're struggling with this addiction. But truthfully, if you track the addiction, your father had it. And your grandfather had it. And your great-grandmother had it. And your whole family had it. And because they didn't deal with it, because they weren't thinking legacy, now you're driving in a car that you got to pay for. And God is saying, the buck stops here. That, that this is it. I put you in the earth because you're about to stop some stuff I know people who went to go buy a house and when they went to go buy a house they saw their credit report and the credit score was so jacked up and when they saw the report they realized that mama had gave out their social security number to the whole family and everybody done rented stuff and didn't pay back and everybody had electric bills and cell phones that don't even exist no more why because somebody didn't care about legacy and they handed you a bill and now you can't walk in Canaan not because of your issues but because of some issues that were passed down God forbid you are sitting in this place saying I don't care about legacy you need to care about it because somebody's got to live in the life you have you are passing something down whether you want to or not Why are you the only one who knows how to make that apple pie everybody love? Why, why are you the only one who knows how? So you mean to tell me, can't nobody else make that sweet potato pie recipe but you? So, so you're going to just die and you're not going to tell nobody what the secret was. <laughs> Even Colonel Sanders left his secret. Now come on now. Even Colonel Sanders said, yeah, I make some good chicken, but when I'm gone, y'all going to keep making it. What I'm saying to you is, why is it that you're the only one, so you own all this real estate and you didn't share that with nobody, you're not gonna tell nobody how to do that? You're the only successful marriage in your family, you're not gonna tell nobody. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna hoard this information so you can be the only one who wins. You have lost. You have lost. You have lost. And I'm telling you that you are gonna have to look at your life and recognize that everything you are doing right now is having major and great impact. If you're gonna leave a legacy, you're gonna to have to remember how you started, but focus on how you finished. I don't want you to forget how you started. I don't want you to forget that father wasn't there. I don't want you to forget some of the conditions that you were raised in. I don't want you to forget some of the rejection, some of the pain. No, I absolutely, I want you to remember how you started, but do not for one second let it dictate how you're going to finish. There's somebody in this room saying, Pastor, I don't understand. I, I hear you, but, but this sermon got me all messed up. I came, I, I was feeling good. And then you done preached this sermon, and now I'm thinking about the 60 years of my life I've wasted. I'm thinking about the 60 years of hurt I caused. I'm thinking about the 60 years of stuff I did. I got some college student who's sitting here saying, Pastor, I wish I heard this word in my junior year in high school. I wish I heard this word in my sophomore year in high school, because I did some stuff as a sophomore that I'm still paying for now. I did some stuff as a senior that I'm still paying for now. Can I tell you something? Your yesterday may have been jacked up, but God knows how to take the old and make it new. I came to preach to somebody today and let you know your first 60 years was jacked up but your next 60 days God says I will turn it into such impact I will give it such greatness that you won't even remember some of the stuff that you jacked up legacy is built now but experienced later if you are going to leave a legacy you got to start building now I'm talking to college students okay don't don't wait oh when I graduate in four years I'm just gonna live it out and then when I graduate, when I graduate, I'm going to be free. I'm going to get serious about my life. Can I tell you something? I know 40-year-olds who are living under the consequence of things they did from 18 to 22. 
and they thought that when they left school that they left the issue not realizing that the issue followed them all the way into their adulthood I'm telling you that right now you are a builder right now you have to start building your life now you got to start building credit now you got to start building your finances now you got to think like a farmer a farmer thinks sowing I'm sowing seeds realizing that I'm not going to reap this until later Your last name is bigger than your first name. I don't care how you got your name, but you need to be living for your last name. Your first name is about you, but your last name is about us.